what drive us forward and help us to make a positive impact in our community. Uh, and with this, I welcome all our members, including the senior members, the management committee members, and uh, uh, especially the today's speaker, Mr. Mahar Afsal. Uh, actually, he is an old friend of mine. I, uh, when he was working with uh, uh, Baker Dilly, we used to officially meet together and uh, have a discussion. So I know him uh, from uh, maybe eight, nine years before. So I welcome uh, all of you into this program, uh, the PD program organized by the OC Center. And I look forward to working with all of you as we move into a new year and continue to make our overseas center a beacon of service excellence in our community. Thank you. Thank you, the chairman, Raji uh, Pijo. Uh, so uh, that was wonderful from him uh, giving an, a brief about uh, what we are, uh, what's going on and what's going to happen in our uh, CMA community over here in UAE. So I, I just uh, now I will be giving a brief description about uh, our uh, current speaker today. So this will be I will I will just uh, give a uh, I will be uploading one slide so that you can just uh, have an idea. One second, let me start with that one. I'll share a slide. With this. Okay. Can everybody see this? I hope everybody can view this one. Yes. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. This is about the speaker who is a wonderful speaker. As I see, I haven't met him, but as I see his profession, as I see his activities, it's beautiful. Can see Mr. Maser Mahar Afsal. He is a chartered accountant by profession and the founder and managing partner of Chris Cooper Tax Audit Advisory Headhunting and e-learning system. He started his profession, professional career with PwC, wonderful, and then worked with the Baker Tilly Dubai as an associate director. Later on, Galadari Brothers, VAT manager. So I have also worked with Galadari Brothers. Say that. He independently led several large scale seminars on VAT for industry professionals. He has teaching strategy, uh, he was teaching strategy, strategic financial management, and he was the main speaker on VAT. Oh, that's a wonderful thing, actually. See that accounting and financial show of Middle East for three consecutive years. And he's writing weekly articles. I have to see these articles, right? So we'll understand a lot of things about finance, UA compliance corner, and these articles will be very useful for us. And his ideas of transfer pricing, VAT, um, corporate tax. So uh, you all will be ready for this beautiful speech on corporate tax, corporate. And um, this is actually, we are decoding ourselves on the corporate tax, what all are there? The involving on to the activities, how the corporate tax will be going forward and help you out. So that's your motive and my motive. And his motive is to provide us the major activities that is going to happen in the future. That's the future of UAE that's going to happen. So let us start this session, right? Okay, so I am going to hand over my podium, the podium to the beloved, the great speaker, Mr. Mahar Afsal. So I welcome him to give this beautiful uh, seminar. So let us start. It's early time, but I want him to come over here so that he has to uh, be rejuvenated by this N number of people. The uh, number, is, number is increasing now, actually in our community. So I do welcome again, Mr. Mahar Afsal to the podium. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Majid. Uh, very, really, very nice introduction. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Reggie, for uh, 
giving me an opportunity to the speak to the very respectable members of the CMA overseas chapter. And I really appreciate your effort, support. And uh, before proceeding further, I just like to request, can you give me the screen sharing right so I can share my presentation, please? I think you have that right. You can just share. Just, uh, I think, just I'll stop sharing. I'll stop yeah. sharing. Yeah. I'll stop yeah. sharing. Yeah. Now you can yeah. do it. Yeah. Now you are able to do? Yes. Wonderful. Now it's coming. So thank you very much once again, and uh, we are uh, we are discussing and we are starting our session. And uh, as you know, the corporate tax has uh, very recently the law has been introduced, and uh, we are trying to decode, we are trying to interpret the law. And before this public consultation document was introduced, and press release was there from the government as well. So we are discussing the corporate tax timeline. We all know this. There was an announcement on 31st Jan 2020, 22, where the Ministry of Finance introduced that the corporate tax will be implemented in the UAE. Then the public consultation document, they have introduced the public consultation document on April 28, 2022. Now the law has been introduced on 9th of December, 2022. We all know this, that the law will be effective. Law will apply for the financial year starting on or after 1st of June 2023. So this will be the effective date and implementation date of the respective law. I have basically... Okay, I have, I have basically the whole law, I have just structured in the one page. If you are looking into this page, the law, the persons, basically the person, there are three persons and these three persons can be exempt person. These can be out of the, these can be exempt persons. These can be out of the scope persons or these can be taxable persons. These taxable person can further be classified as a single taxable person or it can be classified as a tax group. These structures you will not find exactly in the corporate tax law, but I have structured it just for the, <clears throat> sorry, just for the convenience purposes. So it can be a single taxable person. It can be a tax group as well. If this is a single taxable person, the single taxable person is liable to calculate taxable income. They need to adjust exempt income. They need to adjust the relief. They need to adjust the deductions. Even the tax group is liable to do the same thing. Then after that, they will calculate this taxable income or it can be taxable loss as well. If this is a taxable income, then they will be liable to calculate taxable income. It can be tax loss as well. So from the taxable income, they will calculate payable tax. Then they, the businesses will be liable to submit the return. Then they will make the payment and might be they will apply for the refund as well. At the end, there are some administrative provisions that we will look into this detail. So there's some other articles as well that I mentioned in the left bottom side. So if you are going this structure, the total 70 articles of the law. This covers totally three categories, which are the exempt persons, out of the scope person, and taxable person. So the tax rate, so far as tax rates are concerned, these tax rates, it can be depend upon that the person is a qualifying free zone person, or the person is a general, other than qualifying free zone person. When I'm asking general person, might be the business, the taxable person is on the mainland, might be the person is on the non-qualifying free zone or P of non-resident person. If the person is a qualifying free zone person, the tax rate is 0% on the qualifying income and 9% on the taxable income. Till now, the definition of qualifying income has not been introduced in the law. It has been given that the separate cabinet decision will be issued. They will provide the definition of qualifying income. So if the qualifying free zone person will look into the definition of qualifying free zone person as well, 
if the qualifying free zone person is earning qualifying income, it will be subject to tax at 0%. In case all other income of the qualifying free zone person, it will be subject to tax at 9%. So far, the general provisions of the other than non-qualifying free zones person, there will be 0% corporate tax on the income up to 375,000 and 9% on the taxable income of three, more than 375,000. This is the definition of resident and non-resident. It will tell you the exactly <coughs> which businesses, which persons are subject to tax and which persons are not subject to tax. This was the, my latest and recent articles in the college time. I wish you know, this picture exactly over there as well. So this person, as I mentioned, it can be classified into exempt persons. It can be taxable persons. Or it can be out of the scope persons. If I'm asking what are the exempt persons, this is the exempt persons. We'll go back to the slide. We'll discuss the taxable persons as well. These are the persons which are exempt from the UAE corporate tax. It can be a government entity. It can be a government controlled entity. It can be a person engaged in the extraction of natural resources. It can be a person engaged in the non extraction of natural resources, qualifying public interest benefit entity, qualifying investment funds, public or private pensions or social security fund, juridical persons, which is incorporated in the UAE and wholly owned and controlled by government entity, government controlled entity, all these five. The extraction of natural resources, non-extraction of natural resources are qualifying public entity. If any juridical person is owned by any of them fully owned, then it will be exempt from the UE corporate tax as well. Or any other person as may be determined by the cabinet decision that we need to wait for the cabinet decision, it will be exempt person. There are a lot of conditions given in the law, like for the government entity, they are asking government entity is not doing any commercial activity the government, if the government entity is doing any commercial activity, then the government entity, the separate portion of commercial activity will be subject to tax. In the government controlled activity, these are the same conditions. Person engaged in the natural resource, the extraction of natural resources, the main conditions are that the person is sub at licensed from the Emirates. This is being subject to tax at the Emirates level. And the person has given a notification to the respective ministry. These are the three conditions. In the same way, there are conditions for each and every category. If the business are exempt, they need to fulfill those conditions. If these conditions are not being fulfilled, then the person will not be able to claim themselves as an exempt person. So as I mentioned, if they are juridical person, we'll look into the definition of juridical person as well. If the juridical person incorporated and fully owned and controlled by any five of them, these are the conditions for the persons which is a juridical person incorporated in UAE and fully owned and controlled by ABF. I have given this ABF as well. So these are the any one of them, if the person undertakes any activity of the exam person holding assets or investing funds or doing any activity that ancillary to this carried out by the exam person, these will be subject to exempt income tax as well. So this is a high level categories of the persons which will be exempt from UE corporate tax. There are a lot of ifs and buts, as I mentioned, a lot of conditions are there as well. So now I'm going back to the taxable person. This is the most important thing. In the taxable person, this taxable person can be a resident taxable person or it can be a non-resident taxable person. When I'm asking resident taxable person, it doesn't mean the persons who are Living in UAE, this is the resident and non-resident definition from the UAE corporate tax point of view. It doesn't matter, might be someone living in India, Pakistan, or might be in UK, America, somewhere, might be the person is a resident of UAE for corporate tax purposes. What I'm trying to say, this residence, this non-residence, this doesn't mean the person is physically living here, it would be resident. It is, these are the definition that has been given in the UAE corporate tax law. So resident taxable person, they said it can be a juridical person. Juridical person, they said limited liability company, it can be a juridical person. Person, public shareholding company can be a juridical person. Public joint stock companies can be a juridical person. Incorporated partnership can be a juridical person. These are the basically legal persons 
other than sole establishment, other than civil company, because sole establishment and civil company, they are asking these two companies are natural person in the language of the law. So means any LLC in the UAE, any public shareholding company, any public joint stock company, if this company is being controlled and managed anywhere around the world, it doesn't matter. But if this company is registered in UAE, it will be considered a resident for UAE corporate tax purposes and the worldwide income of such juridical person will be subject to tax. If there is any LLC, any public joint stock company, if company is registered in the UAE, it will be subject to corporate tax. So there's a juridical person incorporated out of the UAE. There might be there a company in USA, but this company is being managed and controlled from UAE. Means when I'm asking manage and control from UAE, means that decision making of the company is being happening in UAE. Management is sitting here. Management is taking decisions from UAE. Then in this situation, they said if this is a juridical person incorporated out of UAE, controlled and managed from the UAE, still it will be considered resident and worldwide income of this person will be subject to tax as well. Then there's a natural person who conducts business in the UAE. I, we have already discussed a natural person. It can be sole establishment. It can be civil companies. If the natural person is doing any commercial activity in UAE and the natural person has taken license from the government, and it doesn't matter this person is living anywhere around the world. If this person has a business in the UAE, the business income of this person will be subject to tax. Even this business is earning income out of the UAE. Suppose we have one civil company. I have this Crest Cooper. Crest Cooper is a civil company or store establishment. I am earning income from Bahrain. I'm earning income from Saudi Arabia. I'm earning income from Oman. All these income related to this business will be subject to tax in UAE. And this person business will be considered a resident as well. So any other person determined in the decision, we need to wait for the decision and they will give in the decision as well. So non-resident taxable person, it can be a permanent establishment of the UAE in the UAE. Means there's a one company incorporated in UK. This company has a branch in UAE. The income related to the branch of UAE will be subject to tax in UAE. Or any person derives state UAE sourced income, it will be subject to tax in UAE. It will be considered non-resident, but subject to tax. Or any other person who has an access in the UAE, again, generating UAE sourced income, it will be considered non-resident, but subject to tax in UAE. So we can say, person can be classified exempt person, taxable person, out of scope person. We have gone through the definition of exempt person. Person can be taxable person, taxable can be resident, non-resident. Then we have done, the, we have gone through this, what are the resident person, what are the non-resident person. Now this is the out of the scope person means someone is living in India, they are doing business there, they don't have any link with the UE, these are the out of the scope person. If someone has a company in USA, UK, anywhere around the world, this company is not generating any UE sourced income, it will be out of the scope of UE corporate tax. So I have discussed the word again and again, UE sourced income. If these are the non-resident person and they are generating UE sourced income, so what is the definition of UE sourced income? They said, if the UE sourced income wage is derived from any of the following, this income is being derived from UE resident person, it will be UE sourced income. If this income is being derived from the non-resident person related to the P of the non-resident person in UE, it will be considered as the income derived from the UE, UE sourced income. Or if this income is being earned from the activity that are being performed, like assets are being sold in UAE, capital is being invested in the UAE, services are being provided into the UAE. If any of these conditions are there, then we will say this is the UAE sourced income. These are the certain examples of UAE sourced income, like sale of goods in the UAE, provision of services in the UAE, contracts are being performed and negotiated in the UAE movable and immovable property in the UAE, income from disposal of shares, interest income subject to the condition secured by the property in the UAE, borrower is a government, borrower is a resident person, then this interest will be considered UAE source income as well. Insurance or reinsurance premium, if insured assets received from the insured asset activity is in the UAE and insured person is also a resident person, then this interest income will be considered UAE sourced income. We have discussed the word, the permanent establishment of non-resident person in the UAE. P is the most important concept in, in, 
be the most important concept in the UE corporate tax law when I'm asking non-resident persons, P means permanent establishment of a non-resident person in UE, and we have discussed any income related to the P of non-resident person will be subject to tax in UE. So what is P? They said P is in the state of the following instances. In the following, any of these three instances, P can be established. Like if the non-resident person has a fixed or permanent establishment in the UE, like they have a branch, they have an office, they have a factory, they have a management, or they have a six month, more than six months site, then it will be considered that there is a permanent establishment of the non-resident person in UE. In the same way, if the person has authority to conclude business in the UE and habitually exercises this authority to conclude and negotiate contract, then it will be considered the non-resident person has a PE in the UE. Or any other form of nexus specified in the cabinet decision, it will be considered PE of the non-resident person in UE. Again, any income related to the PE of non-resident person, it will be subject to tax in UE. So these are the exceptions if these sports services are being provided to the non-resident person like storing, displaying, keeping record, like they're conducting and any activity prepared to the ancillary activities, agent in the normal course of business means anyone is not exclusively working for the non-resident person, then it will be considered this is the agent in the normal course of business, mere presence of the natural person in the UAE. So these are the exceptions where we will say these exceptions where we will say that this is not the P of the non-resident person. Otherwise, it will be considered the non-resident person has P in the UE. These are the independent agent. In the previous slide, I have used the word if someone is working as an independent agent in the normal way. So we will say it will not be considered a P of the non-resident person. And these are the definition that has been given in the law for what is the independent agent. So a independent agent it will not establish any P of the non-resident person if someone is working independently in the UE. So these are the conditions which suggest that these people, if these conditions are being fulfilled, then we will say that someone is not working as a P of the non-resident person. So these conditions are investment manager, investing, working provides investment management and brokerage services. Investment manager is subject to regulatory, regulatory oversight of the competent authority. Transactions are being carried out in the normal course of business. Investment manager acting independently, independent capacity. Investment manager doing all transactions with the non-resident person on a month basis. An investment person, sorry, investment manager is charging the non-resident person for this fee for these services as well. Moreover, this investment manager is not doing any non-resident person representative in the UAE. So if these conditions are being fulfilled, we will say that the investment managers is not as a PE of the non-resident person, but it will be considered that the investment manager is working independently. This is something about the partnership which has been given in the law, the partnership, it can be a local partnership or it can be a foreign partnership. This local partnership might be, this is the unincorporated partnership, if incorporated partnership, if this is an unincorporated partnership, this will not be a juridical person. We have already discussed the definition of juridical person. So the income of it will be considered transparent. Law is specifically using the word transparent. Transparent means the income. Transparent means the income of uh, income of uh, this partnership will be subject to tax in the hands of the partners. So this is the reason this is called transparent because the income and the partner will be liable to submit the returns, partner will be liable to tax, partner will be liable to register. Partnership itself will not have any importance. So this is the reason this is called transparent. But if this is the incorporated partnership, they said incorporated partnership, we need to look into this, the liability of the member is limited or the liability of the member is unlimited. If liability of the all members of the partner is limited, then this limited partnership will be considered like a company in the UAE. And if the liability, even a single member is unlimited, then it will be considered again transparent and the income of such partner will be subject to tax in the hands of the individual partner. And there is a possibility that the partnership is out of the UAE. If this partnership is out of the UAE, they said it will be treated like unincorporated entity. 
subject to the condition foreign partnership is not subject to tax the partnership itself is not subject to tax and the income of this partner is subject to tax in the hand of the partners out of uae then it will be treated like a transparent it will be treated like a unincorporated partnership the option has been given to the partnership in the law that the partners in an unincorporated partnership can apply to the fta for the unincorporated partnership to be treated as a taxable person this is option has been given to the unincorporated partnership and if the partnerships are availing this option and fta is approving their request then they will be treated like a limited liability company or juridical person in the ue all provisions of the <clears throat> law will applicable to such partnerships family foundation they are using the word in the law family foundation as well the generally the family foundations falls under the definition of juridical person it will be subject to tax prime officer but the family foundation can apply to be treated as a transparent and unincorporated partnership if these conditions are being fulfilled and these conditions are family foundation was established for the benefit of the natural person or benefit of the public interest principal activity is to hold invest disburse and manage assets with saving or investment family foundation doesn't conduct any business the main purpose is not to avoid the tax if these conditions are being fulfilled then we will say that the family foundation can apply to be treated as an unincorporated partnership if they are not applying then by default family foundation will be treated as a juridical person and they will be subject to tax these are the free zones and this is the most important thing everybody is asking this question what is the treatment of free zone we all need to be very clear none of the business in the ue is there that they are not liable to register every business in the ue other than exempt businesses they will be liable to register even they are on the free zone even they are on the mainland the beauty is if they are earning qualifying income still they will be liable to submit the return still they will be liable to pay tax might be it is 0% might be it is 9% if they are earning qualifying income tax will be 0% if they are earning non qualifying income tax will be 9% in all cases they will have to register they will have to register for corporate tax purposes so when this person will be considered a qualifying free zone person is if these four conditions are being met then we will say then the person has been classified can be classified as a qualifying free zone person maintains adequate substance in the ue not elected to be subject to corporate tax because qualifying free zone person can apply to the fta to be treated as a person subject to corporate tax they have not applied to the federal tax authorities to be treated as a corporate tax purposes they derives qualifying income and we need to wait for the cabinet decision that they will provide the definition of qualifying income they comply with the transfer pricing rules and regulations if all these conditions are being fulfilled then we can say that the person is a qualifying free zone person and the income of this qualifying free zone person qualifying income will be subject to tax at 0% otherwise it will be subject to tax at 9% i personally believe the free zone person if they are fulfilling all conditions of the respective free zone because we know that the free zone person cannot work out of the free zone if they are only working in the free zone if they are making any money from the free zone if they are restricting themselves to the free zone then earning any income i believe it will be considered a qualifying income then they will not be subject to tax it has been written in the public consultation document if these free zones persons are earning even a single dirham business from the ue mainland then the whole income of this free zone person will be subject to tax so we need to wait for the cabinet decision they will provide more clarity on this these are the general provisions taxable persons that the how to convert the accounting profit into the taxable person the important thing is we know this we are all a bunch of professional people we know this that the accounting profits are calculated based upon the accounting rules taxable profit will be calculated based upon the taxable rules so accounting rules are different taxable rules are different once the accounting rules are different from the taxable rules So there will be some sort of gap in between the accounting profit and taxable profit, and the businesses will have to make the adjustment to arrive at the taxable profit. So our base, it has been written in the public consultation document, even in the law, 
our base will be who the businesses will be liable to start to calculate a taxable profit based upon the accounting profit and they will have to prepare the financial statement as per the sorry as per the applicable financial reporting standards based upon the accounting standards businesses every business every llc every shop every laundry man every uh, grocery man they will have to prepare the financial statement as per applicable ifrs so once this financial statement has been prepared law is not asking they need to get the financial statement audited but they said minister has the authority ministry of finance at any time can issue a decision a ministry can ask every business is liable to have the audited financial statement but till now there is no requirement in the law that they need to prepare the audited financial statement but they need to prepare the financial statement as per the applicable financial reporting standards so businesses will have to prepare the profit and loss from the profit accounting profit and loss we need to convert this accounting profit and loss into the taxable profit and loss and we need to make the adjustment and these adjustment key adjustment will be unrealized gain and loss because accounting has to realize sorry accounting asked us to book the gain and loss on accrual basis a tax authority will ask on actual basis then they said we, we cannot include the exempt income and like exempting as a qualifying dividend capital gain will not be subject to tax we need to make the adjustment income arising and intra group transfer we look into this what are the intra group transfer it will not be subject to tax reliefs under the corporate loss we need to adjust this tax loss we need to adjust this. we need to adjust the non deductible expenses we need to adjust the deductible expenses we need to adjust the related party transaction and any other transaction any other thing that is given the cabinet decision we need to make all these adjustments to arrive at the taxable profits the small businesses government is planning to bring some sort of provision the ministry of finance will give certain threshold and the, if the taxable income of the business is below that threshold then they can elect not to be treated as a taxable person not to be treated as a taxable income there is a one exception but they need to avail this exception from the ministry ministry will set the threshold if the income is below threshold they can elect themselves not to to be treated as a taxable person they can allow they can elect that they are not driving any income which is subject to tax and if they are availing this exceptions then all related provision like exempt income relief deduction tax loss transfer pricing all these rules will not be applicable on the small businesses this is the exempt income we have already discussed exempt persons these were different eight nine categories government entities government controlled entities extractive business non extractive natural resource business qualifying investment fund qualifying public benefit fund pension fund social security fund juridical person which is 100% controlled by the five we have already discussed these were the exempt persons but now we are discussing this is my exempt income of the taxable person this is a different thing so this is the exempt income which has been given in the law dividend and other profit distribution received from the resident juridical person if the business is receiving we have gone through the definition of resident juridical person if the business are receiving any income or individual are receiving any income for the resident juridical person it will not be subject to tax dividend other profit distribution received from the non resident for a non resident person where the person have 5% investment in overseas business at least for a period of 12 months and rate which is applicable out of the ue is at, at least 9% if these conditions are being fulfilled and the person is getting any dividend or any profit distribution that will not be subject to tax as well any other uh, any other income related to this participation interest participation interest is basically businesses needs to have 5% minimum share holding at least for a period of 12 months and rate should be applicable 9% outside if these conditions are being fulfilled then we can this is a participating interest so any other income like exchange gain or loss is share proceeds it will not be subject to tax income derived by a non resident person for operating aircraft or ships in the uae air space or water it will not be subject to corporate tax as well subject to the condition the operators of ue have the same privilege in the respective country then it will not be subject to corporate tax otherwise it will be subject to corporate tax income of a foreign permanent establishment like ue company they have one branch in uk that branch 
they can avail this exception that the branch income and branch expenses should not be considered for UE corporate tax purposes subject to the current condition branch is at least paying 9% tax in UK. These are the relief transfer within a qualifying group. The businesses can set up a qualifying group. If they can set up a qualifying group, then there are some conditions. And in case of qualifying group, if the assets or liabilities are being transferred within the qualifying group, there will not be any gain or loss. It will be booked at the book value, not at the market value. One entity will remove the assets and liabilities from its books at the book value, and other entity will and other entity will book the assets and liabilities at the book value in its books. At the end, there will not be any gain or loss. The conditions are if there's no subsequent transfer within two years from the date of transfer out of the qualifying group. So basically, it is a one group, it is a part of the group. If one entity is transferring asset and liability to the qualifying group, it will not be subject to it will not be any gain and loss. It will not be subject to corporate tax. Subject to the condition, this entity is removing at the book value, this entity is booking at the book value. But whatever is being transferred from this to this entity, within the group, they can transfer. But if they're transferring anything out of the group within two years from the date of transfer, then this transaction tax authority will have to restate at the market value. So these are the conditions. And the, what are the requirements to become a, eligible for a qualifying group? They said, member must be a juridical person in the state, non-juridical person have a P in the UAE. Either a taxable person or third party owns at least 75%. One person owns other person, 75%. Or third party owns 75% of both. Then they can go for a qualifying group. And persons are not exempt, persons are not qualifying free zone persons, financial year, same financial year end date, financial statement are being prepared using the same standard. If these conditions are being fulfilled, then we can say that the persons are eligible to become a part of the qualifying group. If they are part of the qualifying group, no gain and loss on the transfer of assets and liabilities, subject to the condition these assets and liabilities are not being transferred within the next two years from the date of transfer out of the qualifying group. The business restructuring, DC transfer is a going concern. Might be, you know that there is some provision given in the corporate tax law as well. If the business are being transferred, as a going concern, again, there will not be any gain and loss under transfer as a going concern. It will be booked at the book value. The transfer of entire business or independent board of business and the person is getting share or equity interest in the other person. Might be one person is transferring his entire business is subject to these conditions and person ceases to exist in the transfer or ceases to exist. Still, they said it will be considered transfer as a going concern, business restructuring. No gain or loss will be recognized. One person will remove from his books at the book value. Other person will book in his books at the book value. So there are some condition requirement to be transferred as a going concern. These are the some conditions. Transfer occurs as per applicable yes, legislation. Yes. Taxable person yes, must be a resident person or non-resident P in the UK. Persons are not exempt. I, I request to all of you, if someone is having any call, they need to mute themselves so they should not be any disturbance to the rest of the yes. really that. Thank you very much. Thank you. So persons are not qualified for free zone person. Financial aid ends on the same date. Mm -hmm. Prepare financial statement by the applicable same standard. Transfer undertaken for valid commercial reason. If these conditions are being fulfilled. So transfer of a business or independent board of the business will not be subject to corporate tax. But these are subject to some conditions, like it will not be treated as a transfer at book value, but at a market value. If within the next two years, share or the ownership interest are sold. So we have already discussed when one person is transferring to other person, they are getting the consideration in the form of shares or equity interest. Whatever the equity interest, whatever the share the transferer is getting, if that transferer is transferring that share or that equity interest within the two years from the date of transfer, then the, this transaction will be treated at the market value. It will be subject to corporate tax. If there is a subsequent transfer of disposal of the assets, independent part of the asset, within two years from the date of transfer, still it will be subject to corporate tax at the market value. 
But if this is being transferred after two years from the date of transfer, then it will not be subject to corporate tax. It will be booked at the book value. Tax losses range, we all, we all know this. Again, again, we are discussing. The tax loss can be covered, carry forward for unlimited period of time. But tax loss can be adjusted against the taxable income up to 75% of the taxable income. 75% of the taxable income. If the tax loss of the previous period is 100, next year income is assuming 1000, uh, assuming uh, 200, sorry, assuming uh, tax loss is assuming 500, and next year my income is assuming 300, so I will take 75%. 75% of the income I can adjust against this loss, remaining loss will be carried forward for the unlimited time. But disqualified losses are there if there are losses before the commencement of corporate tax or if there are losses before the person is getting itself registered for corporate tax purposes, these losses cannot be carried forward against the taxable profit in the future. Moreover, there are two conditions. These limitations are continuity of the ownership or continuity of the business. If any of these two conditions are being fulfilled, then the business can carry forward its losses for unlimited period of time. Otherwise, they cannot carry forward their losses. The continuity of ownership means when the loss incurred and the, when the loss was adjusted, in between there is no change of ownership more than 50%. Second, if there is a change of ownership more than 50%, then the loss is the person must be conducting the same business and if the person is doing the same business or if they are the same owner, then the losses can be carried forward for unlimited period of time. Otherwise, it cannot be carried forward for unlimited period of time. Limitation doesn't apply where the on the businesses under taxable person where the shares are listed on the recognized stock exchange. Tax loss leave, these are the conditions for the tax losses. Both are the taxable juridical person. These are the conditions for the carry forward losses, tax loss leave. Ownership, at least 75%, one person can be adjusted. Basically, one person can adjust tax loss against the other taxable person. The both are juridical person. Ownership is 75% common. Same financial standards. Non-qualifying person, not exempt person. Same financial year end. And the common ownership exists from the start of the tax period in the tax loss income to the end of the tax period. If these conditions are being fulfilled, then one taxable person can adjust its tax losses against the taxable profit of the other taxable person. These are the deductible expenses while calculating the taxable profit. Expenditure which are incurred exclusively for business purposes, business will be able to claim 100% subject to the limitation that we have discussed earlier. Some expenses are common expenses. It will be apportioned on between the two businesses. There are some expenses, they said it will be allowed proportionately. Might be these are exclusively for the business, 100% for the business. But they, they said you can claim it proportionately, like interest. They said the minister will set the threshold. If the interest is below the threshold, then you can claim 100%. If the interest is above the threshold, then they said you can claim 30% of the EBITDA. 30% of the earning before interest, tax, depreciations, and amortization, you can claim. And they say, I think I failed to mention, uh, as, as, as far as I can remember, they can carry forward interest maximum for a period of 10 years. I need to include into my slide. I think this is 10 years, but I'm not confirming this. I need to double check this. I think this is a period of 10 years. Up to period of 10 years, they can carry forward their interest. After a period of 10 years, businesses cannot carry forward their interest. But this limitation, this is called uh, interest capping rules. These interest capping rules are not applicable to the banks, insurance pro providers, natural person is not applicable on them. 50% of the entertain like this, expense is 100% for business, but they said you can claim only 50% for the entertainment of amusement, recreation for apply to expenditure for the purpose of customers, shareholders, these means accommodation means if the business is incurring expenses for customers, shareholders, suppliers, business partner, and these expenses can be in the form of meals, accommodation, transportation, admin, the business can claim only 50% of the expenses. Business cannot claim 100%, even the expenses related to the business. 
these are the non allowable expenses you cannot claim while calculating taxable profit entertainment expenses more than 50% more than entertainment more than 50% it means you can claim maximum up to 50% losses not related to the business you cannot claim related to the exempt income you cannot claim non business expenses you cannot claim donations grants gifts you cannot claim unless and until it has been given to the qualifying public benefit fund if it has been given to the qualifying public benefit fund that were discussed in the exemption category then you can claim otherwise you cannot claim any fines and penalties you cannot claim bribes and illicit payment you cannot claim dividend profit distribution you cannot claim amount withdrawn from the business for natural business persons you cannot claim corporate income tax imposed might be in tax has been imposed this year but it has been adjusted in the next year in the books you cannot claim as allowable expenses to calculate the taxable profit the recoverable input tax you cannot claim but if recoverable of bullard input tax like expense related to the car entertainment or expense related to the staff accommodation all these things what are the input tax blocked in the car wet law you can claim that but the recoverable input tax businesses cannot claim tax imposed out of the ue this cannot be claimed as well you can set up a tax group and all intra group transaction will not be subject to tax and to set up a tax group they said these are the all condition to set up a tax group first the person resident persons are juridical persons natural person cannot set up only juridical person can set up a tax group parent company owns at least 95% parent company at least own 95% directly or this is a parent company this is a subsidiary might be 95% or uh, might be this company owns 100% this company a this company b they own only 80% the means you cannot basically grouping with b parent company must own directly or indirectly 95% shares voting rights and profits these all condition needs to be fulfilled to be part of the tax group the person is not exempt person not qualifying free zone person same financial year same accounting period and this grouping will be applicable from the first beginning of the year in which this grouping has incurred if all these conditions are being fulfilled then the person can go for tax grouping and if they are going for tax grouping all intra group transaction will not be subject to corporate tax they will have a one single taxable person so it will be considered a one single taxable person they will have one registration they will be liable to submit one return and the group entities will be able to carry forward and they will be able to adjust their losses with each other as well transaction with related parties and connected person most important topic this is transfer pricing i will go through very quickly they said transfer pricing will be applicable on the organizations of economic cooperation and development transfer pricing method they in the in the in the guideline that has been issued by the organization of economic cooperation and development they said there are five transfer pricing methods these are traditional transactional methods these are the preferred methods of the oecd these methods are comparable uncontrolled price method resale price method cost plus method or they are transactional net margin method the transactional net margin method or transactional profit split method which can be further classified analysis contribution analysis or residual analysis i'm not going into the detail of these methods but i have already written article on each method the very detailed and comprehensive articles in the khalish time along with the examples you can go through this otherwise you can you can drop me an email i will i will share with raji and raji can share with you as well so you can find the comprehensive articles there when which method needs to be applied i just wanted to give you the background what the background they say there is a one party a one party b these are the related parties means there might be sister company might be one is a parent company other is subsidiary there is a possibility a will transfer goods to the a is selling something into the market at 100 but might be there is a possibility a will sell goods to b at 50 might be they will say at 150 not at the arm length price so the reason behind this is there are chances that the connected persons are are related party they can shift their profit from the high tax jurisdiction to the low tax jurisdiction if they are shifting their profit from the high tax jurisdiction to the low tax jurisdiction it will be ultimately tax loss to control this thing they are asking the transaction between the related party or transaction between the connected person it should be at arm length and these are the five methods to calculate the arm length price these and by applying any of the method you can calculate the arm length arm length price 
and which method is suitable for which scenario it all depends basically how complex is the transaction in what is the nature of business what is the category of business in which industries you are what is the complexity of the transaction? a lot of ifs and buts to select this method so you can go through the articles or you can approach me directly i definitely will be prior to helping you so objective of these methods is transaction between the related parties or transaction between the connected person should get arm length businesses will not be able to shift their profit from one tax jurisdiction to the another tax jurisdiction these are the withholding tax uh, might be you all are dealing with the saudi arabia saudi arabia is withholding certain percentage of tax so basically when there the cross border transaction one entity will hold certain percentage of tax and they will deposit it to the government in the same way now the ue government is asking if one person is based in uk and this is the ue if uk person is giving any services to the ue company ue company will pay money they said whenever this ue company processing or paying any money to the uk company they will apply zero percent withholding but i am giving you with 100 percent confidence this rate is going to increase because they have written everywhere or we'll just look into the slide as well they said the net tax will be calculated after adjusting withholding tax means uh, very near we are expecting this withholding tax so they said zero percent withholding tax on a ue sourced income for the non-resident person if non-resident is earning any income if uk person is any earning income from ue ue company will apply zero percent withholding tax withholding tax shall be deducted from the gross amount can you read this zero percent it means if they are not planning for any increase of withholding tax, this line would have not been there. So means we all are expecting withholding tax certain percentage. I can't say might be after one year, six months, two years, but for sure withholding tax will be there as well. The maximum amount of withholding tax credits up to the corporate tax payments, corporate tax payable. So withholding tax cannot go more than corporate tax payable. Extra amount will be refunded to the taxable person. So means if one person has paid more withholding tax, person has a right to receive this money from the FTA. These are the foreign tax credits. We have discussed one thing again and again. I just wanted to give you one example. We said it's a juridical person. If the person is registered out of UAE, suppose in UK, the ink and this person is being controlled and managed in UAE. So person is registered in UK, but this person is being controlled and this person is being managed in UAE. UAE law says their worldwide income will be subject to tax. It means 100% this it will be subject to tax here. Here the UK law say, whatever they are earning from the UK, they are registered in UK, they are liable to pay tax here. So same person, management is here, established here, UK is asking to pay the tax, UAE is asking to pay the tax. So what will be the treatment while calculating the taxable income? This person will apply 9% tax. Whatever the tax they have paid in UK, it will be adjusted out of this 9%. Remaining amount will be paid to the government. But this adjustment should not be more than 9%. So this is called foreign tax credit. So foreign tax credit will be allowed to taxable person. Yes, they are allowing the taxable person because they are tax treaty. Foreign tax credit cannot exceed the UECT due on the relevant income. This is what I said. If here the corporate tax is 19%, here it is 9%. It doesn't mean if one person is earning any income from UK, UE government will give them 19% that they were paid in 19% in UK will give them 19% back. No, maximum credit they will give 9%. This is what they said. Maximum credit, foreign tax credit is 9% on the relevant foreign income. Any unutilized foreign tax credit cannot be carried forward or carried back. It will be adjusted by the end of the year. Nothing, no further story for the next year. There are some more provisions of the law. Currency, they said every transaction will be denominated in the dirham. If this is not in dirham, it will be converted in the applicable exchange rate of the UE central bank. Registration, as I mentioned earlier, every person, legal company, LLC, sole establishment, civil company, public shareholding company, public joint stock company, along with this uh, incorporated partnership, they will have to register. And there's no timeline. Basically, they are asking, they need to get themselves registered before the submission of return. But if they are delaying the registration and the company is making losses, they will not be able to adjust the losses. So they need, we need to look into the company is making profit or losses. If the company is making losses, 
they need to get themselves registered as soon as possible. Within nine months from the end of the relevant period, they need to submit the return and they need to make the payment as well. Record needs to be maintained for seven years. Financial statement, as I mentioned earlier, audited financial statements are not required, but unaudited financial statements are required for each and every business. Net tax payable, as I mentioned earlier as well, how they will adjust, what they will calculate gross tax out of the gross tax. First, they will adjust withholding tax, which is 0% for the time being. Then they will adjust foreign tax credit maximum 9%. Then they will adjust any other source of income. Then remaining amount, the person will be liable to pay to the government. Tax period, they said Gregorian 12 months period, unless and until any business has specific period. If one business has tax period, assuming 1st June, sorry, 1st July to 30th June, it will be applicable. If the business doesn't have any tax period specifically like this, then the government will take it straight forward from 1st of Jan till 31st December. A refund person can take the refund if they are unutilized withholding tax or this is the overpaid corporate tax. NTFU's rule, you cannot go for further planning right now after the introduction of the law where we'll show that there's no commercial sense, but the business are trying to save the, business are trying to avoid the tax, then the anti-abuse rules are there. You cannot go and you cannot plan like this. If you are doing this, if any business is doing this for sure, FTA will reverse it. It might be they will apply the penalty as well. Transitional provision is the most important clause. This is very important to understand. They said ending balance of the financial year that immediately before the first tax period will be considered the opening balance. Whatever the ending bole, whatever, sorry, whatever is the ending balance before the start of your financial period, it will be your opening balance. The important thing is they have mentioned in the law, you need to convert these ending balances as per the applicable transfer pricing rule at arm length basis. If you have related body transactions, you would have to adjust it to bring it at arm length basis, then it will be considered opening balance. Otherwise, it will not be accepted by the Federal Tax Authority. How can we help anyway? These are the services that we are providing, impact assessment, implementation, advisory and compliance, all these services we are providing. We have a team, I'm acting as a managing partner, my colleague, tax director, Faisal Hashmi, Maranwa is the tax manager, and it's, thank you very much. Really appreciate your support, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any question, you can go well back to me. Now going back to your uh, uh, most respectable chairperson, Mr. Raji. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, uh, thank you for your uh, yeah, wonderful presentation. And... Uh, so really appreciate your time and everything and the members are actually requested to uh, raise your hands and you know it's better you can if you can type the question in the uh, message then uh, CMA Majid will be uh, reading out for all people information and uh, the speaker can uh, you know answer the question please uh, Majid right. please uh, thank you very much uh, it was a, indeed a wonderful speech and a wonderful seminar and it's very useful for us and uh, and early they might have a lot of questions now hundreds of questions will be coming to you come to you I hope i can just <laughs> forward you the relevant ones actually i just want uh, all of you to cooperate with us please because of the uh, huge volume please type the questions i will just read through the question so that our uh, respected speaker can answer one by one actually please can you type from your side so that uh, the traffic can be reduced that's why i'm just requesting you to type anyhow it's christmas time so we'll enjoy with typing so um uh one of our one of our members juveria has uh, written that income from real estate business um jointly business uh in income from real estate business jointly owned by two partners what is the ta taxability it's an, uh, this important thing is as we discussed and this uh, real estate is a, a, a unincorporated partnership or incorporated or this is a standalone company if this is llc it will be subject to tax if this is a public giant star company subject to tax if it will be Public shareholding company subject to tax, 
But if this real estate business is unincorporated business, then it will be subject to tax in the hands of the shareholder. Otherwise, company itself will be subject to tax. It doesn't matter two partners are there, three partners are there, four partners are there. Because this <clears throat> corporate tax is applicable on the company. They will be liable to calculate the taxable profit of the company. This taxable profit of the company, they will be liable to pay 9% of the taxable profit. Remaining will go in the hands of the shareholder in the form of dividend, which will not be subject to tax. But company profit, taxable profit will be subject to tax. Hope the, uh, it has been answered, uh, Juvaria. And uh, I'll go to the next uh, question. Satish. Uh, uh, Satish, uh, CMA Satish, he has written, if the accumulated losses of free zone entity, how much will be allowed every year? We, I just, I, I given in the presentation, they will allow maximum, uh, it was 75% or 70% that maximum they will allow. 75% you have to return. Yeah, remaining, they will allow for unlimited period of time. Okay, hope this is answered. It's in the presentation itself. You can just go through that one later on. And uh, uh, so CMA Rahul wants uh, more uh, specific about free zone. He's, it's a broad, uh, broad question from his side. Uh, he has asked regarding uh, some explanation on free zone. I just want to know what he wants to know, but is it possible that you can just uh, add on more about free zone okay. area? So. So I think it's a broad question, actually. It's a broad question. Or I can proceed and uh, discuss the free zone. Uh, please, uh, Seme Rahul, please be specific on the question so that uh, I can just give you the details on what you require. So I'll go to the next one. Uh, Vijit, uh, Seme Vijit. In case of sole establishment, who is managing the business? Any salary paid to him in the normal course of business and arm's length business, whether it can be allowed as an expenditure? Of the question is clear, sir. In the for the salary, salary thing, yeah. if we are going in the transfer pricing regulation, they said the connected person. Connected persons are uh, officers, directors, or owners. These are the connected person. If anything is being paid to the connected persons which is not an arm length, they will not allow. If this is arm length, they will allow this. So the salary, if this is being paid to the connected person is arm length, they will allow. But in the non-deduction area, they said any amount which is being withdrawn by the owner, they will not allow. So I believe what is the salary, they will not consider as a withdrawn. Salary is a separate thing, withdrawal is a separate thing. Salary, they will allow based upon the arm length principles. Okay. And any other than withdrawn, suppose they have cash in the uh, in the bank from the they are deducting the cash. This deduction of cash they will not be allowing any taxable expense, tax allowable expenses. But salaries, I believe, they will allow based upon the arm length principle. Okay, that's wonderful. It's only based on the arm length basis. Actually, they will be allowing it. Okay, so yeah. uh, next one actually from uh, CMA Ravindra. Uh, uh, is there any governing body from UAE which can provide any certification on corporate tax? That's I think no, no for the time being, but I believe PwC Dubai, they will bring it because they are already providing the certification on VAT with the collaboration of uh, collaboration of Tolly, Tolly UK, the, the collab collaboration of Audit UK, and there's one more uh, Lexus and Lexus, I think they said they are there four bodies. They have collaborated together. They are already providing the certification on the car wet. I believe they bring they will bring the certification on the car tax as well. But for the time being, no one is providing the certification on the car tax. Hope uh, they will start soon, right? Because it is a prerequisite for the car. Uh, so uh, from CMA Bhushan, uh, she is asking, is it good to move the closing period to March ending? That's his question. <laughs> businesses are uh, businesses are uh, uh, planning. They whatever they were uh, planning, they have already planned. They have already taken the action. Right now, anti-abuse rules have been introduced. Once this anti-abuse rules are in, in 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 action, so anything which doesn't have any commercial sense, it can be reverted back by the FTA. 
So that is actually, uh, it can be changed and they can be reverted back from the FTA and they can change it from the yeah, Basically, if the FTA believes that after the introduction of the anti-abuse rules, businesses have shifted their tax period from one date to another date. If there is no commercial sense, they will never ever allow this. But if there is a commercial sense, then for sure they will allow this. So specific, special permission should be there, I think, so for this purpose. They are not asking any special permission. This is a self-declarative, but businesses needs to make sure that there is a genuine, genuine need. There is a commercial sense. There is a proper feasibility for the businesses. They are already, like, I just, I wanted to give you an example. One of my clients, they are asking, they were already coordinating with the DAFC. They were already in the process of doing this. Then all of a sudden, anti-abuse rules have been introduced. In this situation, they said for sure they will allow. But if the business are shifting their financial period from one date to other date, there are no commercial sense, there are no, uh, I will say, uh, feasibility on this. They are just doing this just to avoid the tax. And then FTA for sure, they will not allow it. Okay. Hope uh, CMA Bhushan got the answer. Now, CMA Sai Aravant uh, is asking, capital gains tax exempted or taxable? And if exempted, why provisions on market value and book value on transfers? Capital gains, uh, uh, first of all, uh, this uh, uh, specifically capital gains, they, they need to give more clarity on the capital gain. And uh, we would be in a better position for sure, but they will be allowed on an actual basis, not an accrual basis. And uh, second, you know, usually tax authorities, accounting principles based on accrual basis, tax authorities follow hybrid basis. Some things they follow on cash basis, some things they follow on accrual basis. So whenever they, we are creating provisions, they will not allow. Whenever we are accounting gain or loss, they will not allow. But the actual, whatever the sale proceed, they will ask, it will be subject to tax. So what I'm saying is based upon this hybrid approach, something they will follow accrual basis, something they will follow cash basis and accounting capital gain or loss. If this is accounting gain or loss, they will not consider it, but the actual sale proceeds, then they will allow it and they will consider it as well. And what was the second leg of the question? Uh, if exempted, why provisions on market value and book value on transfers? I think... Uh... Yes, he's, he's mentioned actually why these provisions has been taken on market value and book value on transfers. I, I mentioned basically uh, if there are the transfers in between qualifying group, there will be no gain or loss on transferring in between qualifying group. At the end, government is not losing anything basically. If one qualifying group in the in, in the groups, these are being transferred to other, other person and the conditions, the respective conditions are being fulfilled, the government is not making any loss. The important thing is general provisions, whatever the, we are creating the provision on a day-to-day basis, because again, tax authorities will not allow these provisions. I believe because they have not given any clarity, the regulations will give us more clarity. Usually authorities are not following accrual basis, they are following hybrid basis. Okay. So hope uh, this answers uh, Sai Aravind, uh, CMA Sai Aravind. If, if he has any query again, actually can type onto that one. And uh, CMA Shyam Damchandran is asking for claiming FTC and WHT. With, uh, with which countries UAE has double taxation treaties? Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I can't uh, exact number. I don't have the exact numbers, but this is reflecting on the ministry side. They have the treaties and uh, and based upon the treaties, it will, but the, in the law, it has not been given that the tax treaty will be there, then they will allow. No, they said foreign tax credit, they will allow, but they will not allow more than 9%. The reason is, while calculating taxable income, we need to include the expenses, we need to apply 9% tax, then we are just 9%. It will be just representation. This is just a presentation, nothing more than this. So in the law, they have not asked anything like based upon the tax treaties, foreign tax credit will be allowed. They have not mentioned anything like this. Okay, in future it will come. Actually, they might have give a list. Yeah, of might be, might be they will bring something. Hope uh, in that time actually it answers. Uh, CMA Chandramoli, um, uh, he is asking, um, uh, can the corporate tax uh, for individual LLC or group actually, 
whether it is for individual LLC or for group. Actually. Uh, LLC, LLC, LLC is not a natural person. LLC is not individual person. LLC is a juridical person and it will be subject to tax. Yes, any LLC, any, any, any LLC can be subject any to tax. LLC. It, it doesn't yes. matter actually. Okay, that answers. Yeah. Again, um, Kemi Juberia, she is asking, in addition to real estate query, uh, she has uh, in public construction uh, in public cons consultation documents. They mentioned income from real estate business will be exempt, but the ta law is silent about it. So it's not that there is for no sure. I, I understood the question basically. Income in the hand of individuals, there are no uh, there is no personal income tax. So any income in the hand of the individual that will not be subject to tax. And if the if someone has invested in the real estate, from the real estate they are running any income because you know this we all are professional. We gone through the law. Whenever we are going to personal income tax, they are asking business income, sales yeah. income, investment right. income. Right. All personal incomes are not subject to corporate tax. That's why they have not given anything about this. So it is like actually it's it doesn't uh, matter. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that answers actually her question. And uh, uh, CMA Jag uh, Jagat is asking, in the year of assessment 2023, only six months profits uh, subject to tax. Uh, I think. No, no, I just I just wanted to highlight. I think he has uh, he, uh, what he meant actually saying that. No, I, said, I think one I thing, one thing we points, have not sir. highlighted let me highlight this is a very important point. Corporate tax is applicable on the financial year starting on or after 1st of June 2023. Yes. If the financial year is starting, if the financial year is starting on 1st June 2023, this first year will be over by 30th of 1st July 2023. This one year will be over by 30th of June 2024. Yes, that and answers. they will be liable yes. to pay tax by 31st March 2025. Oh, okay. And if the businesses have the financial year starting from 1st of Jan, then the corporate tax will be applicable on the financial year starting from 1st of Jan 2024. 24, and their yeah. tax period will be over by 31st December 2024. Okay. They will be liable to pay tax by 30th of September 2025. Mm. Hope this answers his question. Uh, okay. CMA Radhakrishna, our advisor, is asking uh, interest cap is not applicable to natural person. Whether it's applicable or not, he's asking. Not applicable on the natural person. Not applicable on the banks. Not applicable on the insurance companies. Ah, okay, so this is not applicable. Anyhow, can be taken up. Okay, CMA Vijit MK. What exactly mean adequate substance? What is adequate substance? Is it the name mentioned in ESR regulation, or is it, uh, or it should be commensurate uh, with the revenue earned? Uh, we can't say anything conclusively since the law is silent. But as per my uh, experience, based upon my knowledge. Uh, if a person fulfills the conditions of economic substance regulations, like the persons have assets, the persons have uh, expenditures here, the person has a management here, the person has a GM here, it will be assumed that the person has a substance here, but the law is silent about this. Okay, so uh, so now it's silent. Tomorrow there will be some regulations on that one. Some, might, some... Be, might be, but for the right. time being, nothing is there. Okay, okay. That, I hope that answers his question. Again, uh, CMA Sham Damchandran is asking rental income from real estate in the ha in the hands of foreign and local persons won't be treated as business income, provided they don't uh, they are not registered. They don't register the activity with economic department. Is this correct? If they are not registered with the economic department, they are doing anything without getting them to registered with the economic department. This is their own building. They are getting rental income. It should not be subject to tax because this is a personal income. But oh, if okay. someone is doing, if someone is doing any commercial activity in the personal capacity, they are earning any income. This is illegal. 
Ah, okay. So it's get them to register for business purposes. Business purpose, actually, it's, it's a personal income, and it, it's if it is doing doing for some other purpose, other income, actually, it's, it's uh, illegal activity. Okay, yes. that uh, answers. Uh, I hope that answers uh, uh, CMA Sham. Uh, if there's anything, please let me know. Also, uh, another uh, question from CMA Vidya. Pre-zone company, if doing normal course of business, any mainland entity is 0% or 9%. Pre-zone company, if doing normal course of business. Yeah. If pre-zone any... company is, is the person is a free zone person, free zone qualifying person, and the person is earning qualifying income, and the definition of qualifying income will be provided in the cabinet decision, then it will be 0%, otherwise it will be subject to tax. We don't know the definition of qualifying income. But as I mentioned, if the person is specifically working in the free zone, because we all know this, that the, if the business are registered in the free zone, legally they cannot work out of that free zone. If the person is specifically working in that free zone and earning income from that free zone only, then I believe this will be the qualifying income only. But law is, we need to wait for the cabinet decision that will provide us a clarity about the qualifying income. Uh, so uh, this is basically a pre-zone company is transferring to a mainland company. That is a transfer from the uh, entity to uh, another entity in the mainland company. Might be that might be the question she's asking, I think so. But again, if the pre-zone at the end, when the pre-zone company is transferring anything, to any other company means free zone companies earning income. Now yeah. the question arises, this income is a qualifying income or not? We don't have the answer of this. Okay, okay. Sir. They said very clearly in the law, that there will be a cabinet decision. In the cabinet decision, this detail will be provided. Once no. we are knowing the what is the exactly qualifying income, then we will be able to address this question. Okay, okay. Hope that answers. Uh, again, uh, see, Madam Tadakshan sir is asking, is the foreign tax uh, credit eligible for carry forward? Is there a clarity on who should submit audited financial statements? Okay, foreign tax credit, as, as I mentioned, they said maximum it will be allowed 9%. It cannot be carried forward or carried back. And second thing, taxable person, it depends, this is the individual persons or the tax group. In case of tax group, the parent company will be liable to submit the financials and the, and the return as well. In case of individual person, the individual person will be liable to submit. Okay. Uh, that, uh, uh, so you will have more queries from his side. And some members are asking uh, some uh, whether this PPT can be shared by the speaker. Is it possible? Yeah, you can drop me and uh, you can drop me and you share your email for sure. I'll share, send it to you. As uh, Mr. Uh, Reggie has called, give me a direct message actually. Okay, uh, so uh, he, uh, so each person uh, can drop their own, uh, their email ID or drop a message to him so that he can just forward the PPT to that person. Uh, CMA Sham again is asking if a local person owns a mall in mainland which he built on his own property and he is renting it out, will it be a business income or it will be treated as a personal income? It should be business income. I think if the person is doing this uh, uh, for the business, they said if they are doing any activity regularly, if this is a one of even like I have built up the mall, I have given it on these, this is not my business income. But if I'm doing the same thing, I am leasing A, B, C, D regularly. I'm doing the same thing. Then it will be considered a business income. If this is not a regular activity, one-time activity, it will not be considered a business activity. Okay. If if it is uh, one-time activity, it is not a business activity. Okay. So I hope that answers his question. Actually, if anybody has any queries, please let me know. Please uh, type it uh, so that. Uh, uh, if we can have any any further queries, I think uh, Kushner has has stopped from their side. They are all typing their own uh, email IDs actually, <laughs> so you can just forward to them your PPT. Actually, it's a direct message to you only. 
Yeah, kindly request all the members to come forward, ask your questions. It's if, a good please, chance please, we got. Uh, yeah, it's a chance actually to everyone. <laughs> Everybody be active so that we can just have more queries actually. We have we have yeah, they are in a good have time for actually. a Christmas celebration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a celebration, sir. <laughs> yeah. it, it, this is we are celebrating corporate tax now. <laughs> with with uh this Christmas time. So uh, please come forward with more queries actually from your side. We are waiting. Sir, one query actually, uh, one person, Mr. Uh, CMA Rahul has asked actually, he wants uh, some clarity in uh, this uh, free zone, uh, uh, this, CMA, this corporate tax in, CMA, in free zone. Can you give some clarity, sir, for him? He, uh, he has a general question actually. Uh, basically, as I mentioned, free zone businesses, if the, first of all, there are two conditions. The person must be a qualifying free zone person. And for the qualifying free zone person, there are four conditions. First, the person has a substance. Second, the person has not applied to the FTA to be treated as a taxable person. Third, the person is following transport pricing principle. And the fourth condition was... Uh, the four conditions, sorry, I forgot one. There are four conditions. If these four conditions are being fulfilled, then we will say the person is a qualifying free zone person. Oh, sorry, the fourth condition of person is earning qualifying income. If these four conditions are being fulfilled, the person has a substance in the UAE, main expenses, income, meeting, AGM, all these things are in UAE, we will say the person has a substance in UAE. Then the person has not applied to the FTA to be treated as a taxable person. The person is earning qualifying income and the person is applying transfer pricing principles. If these four conditions are being fulfilled, we will say person is a qualifying free zone person. Then okay. we need to look into the income. If any of these four conditions are not being fulfilled, we will say person is not a qualifying person. Now, yes. if the person is, is, earning, is a qualifying free zone person and this person is earning qualifying income, that income will be subject to tax at 0%. All other income will be subject to tax at 9%. Now the question arises, what is qualifying income? They said they will give in the cabinet decision. But all free zone persons, they will be liable to register for VAT. They will be liable to submit the return. They will be, while submitting the return, they will say taxing it, qualifying income, they will tax at 0%. Okay. Up to 375,000, they will apply 0%. Other than this, they will apply 9%. But yeah. they will have to register this. So that's a basic thing for a, a free zone idea. I hope uh, uh, CMA Rafael got some idea on that one. He can just go through the presentation when he gets it from his side. And if any queries, actually, you can just directly email or directly contact uh, Reggie. Uh, or chairman, so he can just clear out actually from. So uh, again, one more question, query came from CMA Vijit. Uh, as a law, corporate tax has been introduced. Is there any relevance in public consultation document now which is issued before? Almost everything is same, nothing is unusual. Nothing has been changed actually from their side. It's almost- Almost the same. everything is same, nothing is as usual, unusual. Okay. So um, the other question sir has asked, any idea for small business relief? So our business relief, we said the Ministry of Finance will set the threshold. If the income is below threshold, then the person can elect that the person not to be treated like the person is earning an income. If the amount is below, beyond threshold, then they will be subject to tax. So small businesses, government is bringing special plan, basically. We need to wait for it. Okay, so the, that will come in the future, actually coming. The, uh, for sure, it will be it will be part of the regulations, uh, which will be can be introduced at any time. Regulations, I believe, in the first quarter of two thousand twenty-three, regulations will be introduced for sure. Okay, now again, one question from uh, uh, Juveria: If uh, free zone companies earns income from mainland up to three seventy-five thousand, will it be subject to nine percent tax or? Zero percent tax. If this free zone company, again, again, going go to a very basics. If this free zone company, the income that they are earning, this is a qualifying income. 
or this is a non qualifying income if their company is earning anything from the mainland and this mainland income is not a qualifying income which is for sure will not be a qualifying income then 90% will be applicable but if this is the only source of income there is no other source of income up to 375 it will be 0% beyond 375 it will be subject to tax at 9% and this 9% again it will be applicable on the taxable income it will not be applicable on the accounting profit it will be applicable on the taxable profits taxable profit as per calculations actually different from the normal profit okay is there any other queries coming um if you have any queries, please let me know now. It's still time is there. Actually, um, if you have some queries, our speaker is ready to answer for that one. So there might be a lot of uh, uh, confusions regarding this thing. You can ask n number of questions, actually. So if there's no queries, can be I, everyone, please come forward. Please make use of our uh, uh, yeah, one speaker query, today. One query came actually from uh, uh, Sai Erwin. In case of uh, free zone companies, is the whole whole income tax is all income tax if there is business with main mainland? Actually, that means that he wants to know whether income taxable. Sorry, if is the whole income taxable? If there is business with the mainland, that's the same thing, right? Yes, it has been again. We again we are basically in the public consultation document. They said if the free zone company is earning any income from the mainland, then the free zone company will be treated. The whole income of the free zone company will be subject to tax. Yes, yes. These are yes. given the public consultation document. But in the law, they have classified into qualifying income and non-qualifying income. So if this is non-qualifying income, they have segregated how much is the qualifying income how much is the non qualifying income qualifying 0% non qualifying 9% okay that uh, was already answered before actually so say coming again one can once again explain the accounting period concept accounting period uh, Asif, uh, CMA Asif, sorry yes. okay accounting period as i mentioned corporate tax tax law will be applicable on the financial year starting on or after 1st June 2023. On or after, if this is starting from 1st July, corporate tax will be applicable from 1st July. If the financial period is starting from 1st September, corporate tax will be applicable 1st September. After 1st June 2023, if this is starting from 1st of Jan 2024, corporate tax will be applicable from that date. So first of all, we need to identify from which period our financial year is starting? From which date? From the date it is starting, then the next 12 months will be my tax period. By the end of that tax period, within the next nine months, we need to submit the return, we need to pay the tax as well. So it depends from the financial year starting from 1st July, 1st September, 1st Jan. So whenever it will be started after 1st June 2023, next 12 months will be my tax period. And within next nine months, we need to submit the return. We need to make the payment as well. Okay. But the law said, if the business is, they doesn't have any specific financial period, then the Gregorian 12 months period, it will be considered financial tax period starting from Jan to December. Okay. The financial year is like that, actually, for that particular company. Yes. Uh, my, one question from uh, CMA Satish. Uh, he's asking uh, directors and management fees have any cap for allowance allowed expenses. Directors... They don't have any cap, but they're asking it should be at arm length. And we have five methods to determine the arm length price. Oh, okay. So it's already mentioned in that, uh, uh, as, as you mentioned before itself. So it's already in the presentation. Uh, CMA Bhar, uh, Bharg uh, is asking, hi. Uh, where we can full uh, we can okay he is he wants to get the full uh, corporate tax act actually now so that's what he's asking actually where we can get this for, uh, for complete uh, corporate tax act you're asking about the regulation basically regulations I, I i believe it will be introduced in january feb 2023 might be before this 
Uh, yeah, uh, Satish, uh, he was asking actually, it, it, this is basically for free, free zone entity, this director's management fees. Uh, I, there's a cap for that one, for allowed, allowed expenses, for free zone entity. They no cap for the free zone. They are basically, they said, uh, they have not classified the related parties are connected into free zone and non-free zone. All right, businesses, right. same principle will be applicable for everyone. Okay. That uh, answers his question. Uh, CMA Bhushan is asking if there's uh, unrealized income as opening, which may be realized in taxable period, shall it be taxable? If there is an unrealized principle, it should not be under the transitional provision. And uh, basically, whatever is reflecting in my books, my closing balance just before the beginning of the financial year, it will be considered my opening balance. So if this is part of the, it is part of the closing balance, so that will not be subject to tax for sure. Oh, okay, closing balance, it will not be taxable. Because if this is unrealized income, this is a closing balance, it is a part of my financial, this is a part of my opening balance, it should not be subject to tax. Previous year, actually. Yeah, previous year, just the balance, balances just appearing in the books before the beginning of the financial period. Closing okay. balance before the beginning of the financial period. Okay, that will not be taxable. Income will not will be part of that opening balance. That's it should normal. not be subject to tax. That's normal thing, actually. <laughs> CMA Vichit is asking, in case of deductible expenditure, unrealized foreign forex loss, which has been calculated as per IFRS, are allowed or not? Unrealized forex. Forex loss. Unrealized forex loss. It should be. It should be. It should be on realization basis, not on accrual basis. So, if it is realized, then it is possible. Or yeah, how? Yeah. Sure. If this has been realized, they basically what is actual actual loss. If it is the actual for, a, for exchange loss, for sure they will allow. So unrealized means actually it might not be realized in one year and uh, and uh, later on they might have got the documentations for that purpose. Well, might be, but uh, tax authorities will follow in this. This is my personal, as I mentioned, it has not been given in the law specifically, but I believe tax authorities will follow a realization basis, cash basis for this. They will not follow accrual basis on this. Okay, okay. So Juveri is asking, please explain un uh, you uni incorporated partnership. Uni incorporated partnership. Okay, unincorporated partnership. Unincorporated partnership is like uh, two people that have a general understanding. They they not they not set up a company. Just they have general understanding. They are doing uh, any activity, not as a sole establishment, not as a incorporated. They are not registered entity. So if they are doing any activity and from this is called unincorporated, just verbal understanding. Okay. So based upon this, they will be getting profit. Once they are getting profit, the income will be subject to tax in the hands of the partner. The partnership itself, unincorporated partnership itself will not be subject to tax. So it's not, if it is not registered and there is no trade license. So yes. that so is possible in this scenario now. It's not possible, right? It's yeah. Okay. In it's this illegal. case, uh, this will be illegal, right? If it is, yeah, is illegal. Yeah. Yeah. There are two things. Whatever we are doing, this is legal or illegal. But if this is a, a, a commercial decision, legal or illegal, but if they are doing this, their <laughs> income will be subject to tax in the hands of the individuals. Hmm, but that is illegal from their side. From yeah, the individual yeah. will be required to get itself registered. It will be considered a sole establishment. Then. The income of the individual will be subject to tax then. Tax okay. So there will be huge even fines if, for if, that one also. Even if it is legal or illegal, I think that's the right way. This is a commercial decision. Very difficult to comment on this. Might be a lot of people are doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's, right. that's happening actually nowadays. <laughs> It'd be. We don't know regarding that one. Uh, so, uh, CMA Sham, actually, what is the definition of related party for transfer pricing? 
This is a very two two pages, but I I just wanted to cut short. <laughs> if if individual or any related party of individual or company or any related party of the company is holding fifty percent or more voting rights control, then it will be considered related party. But there is a long list for this. On the high level, you can say if someone is holding fifty percent and more of the voting parts rights control of the other company, it will be assumed related party. Okay, so uh, the list is already uh, uh, there actually for this purpose, right? This... In the in the one more thing, in the connected person, they said the relationship up to the four. Uh, they are using the specific word uh, uh, up to the four level, like brother, sister, uncle. nephew and uh, these will be considered connected person oh, okay oh, who are related. related to that particular person like yes any 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 sort of relations actually will be considered okay hope that answers and uh, now cma chandra is asking directors remuneration can be allowed completely for ct director remuneration transfer pricing rules for sure 110% it's uh, completely allowed allowed but subject to transfer pricing principle up to ah, the okay. market value ah okay okay uh, so now director is there getting any benefit if natural person is doing any business if natural person is doing any business natural person okay. is withdrawing all establishment any withdrawal any benefit will not be allowed except certainly as i said and uh, now they will consider withdrawal as a certainly or not we need to wait for the regulations okay so uh, so that means that actually it is Uh, that sounds that answers chandra's uh, query and another one is actually from vidya cma vidya please explain on accounting profit and taxable profit for computer uh, computing corporate tax accounting That profit is... calculated based upon the accounting principles and taxable profit when we are converting the accounting profit into taxable profit by making adjustment this adjustment can be various like we have discussed like gain or loss it can be there on and corporate things will be there And uh, fines and penalty reversal will be there. Provision reversal will be there. Might be there okay. the possibility tax authority will consider depreciation the different pattern. IFRS IFRS twelve will come deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. The only thing is the pattern of calculating income and expenses. Accounting different tax different. This will create deferred tax expenses and deferred tax assets and liabilities as well. Okay. So. This is the most challenging thing: how to convert the accounting income into a taxable profit. This is the most challenging thing in the law, practically as well. Uh, it, it has, uh, uh, but there will be particular rules and regulations for that one, as you said before. How to work out on that one? Well, which yeah, I agree. Can be taken the last thing will be there, as I mentioned: accrual reversal will be there, final penalty reversal will be there. Input tax they will not allow, and uh, blocked input tax they will allow. Tax adjustment will be there. Depreciation adjustment can be there, and uh, gain or loss adjustment can be there. So this is the as I mentioned, it will be the most challenging thing, and how to convert the accounting income into the taxable profits. So, for example, sir, uh, regarding this first corporate tax they are going to pay, if the calculation has some issues or calculation has is wrong or something like that, will that be adjusted in the next? Uh, tax uh, which he is going to work out we need for to wait for the regulations for this yeah <laughs> let us do that right <laughs> so we like, uh, for the red they applied straight forward penalty but now they have relaxed we need to yeah, wait for the regulation for this what is written in the procedure might be they will allow might be they will not allow i can't say anything conclusively the initial period they will be having some relaxations so we we'll see that one. Uh, one more question from Juvaria: Is is it illegal if two people, for example, father and son, hold multiple commercial properties in their joint names, and they are earning rental income jointly? Please explain. It will be considered <laughs> personal income, but it will not be subject to tax for sure. Ah, okay, it's not there, right? It's a personal income. It's a personal income actually, so it's not illegal actually. Agreed. Hope uh, I hope everybody's uh, questions, queries are answered, and uh, we are coming. Um, and if there's any queries in future, please write to uh, write to us or write to uh, write to Mr. Reggie or me myself, and uh, we'll just pass on to the message. 
so that uh, we can just uh, get your queries done. I hope uh, uh, so we can, as Raj, Mr. Raji, uh, we can just uh, close the session now. Uh, yes, if everybody completed their question, then uh, we can. So if still you have any question, please come forward and ask and make use of the, uh, you know, the uh, available resources. So they can just uh, direct uh, questions to you or email to you. Yeah. Yeah, we have still, uh, we can have 30 minutes. If anyone has questions or anything, we have still 30 minutes. Okay. Anybody else having queries now? Any queries are unanswered, please let me know. Uh, if it is there, please. Okay. One more query came from uh, CMA Bhushan. To my understanding, above shall be taxed in personal name. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, uh, he's answering to Juarez's uh, query, actually. Uh, CME Bhushan is saying that, to my understanding, above shall be taxed in personal name, like in father and son. Is it taxable, actually? It's taxed under personal name? Sir? So basically, if two people are the owner of the property and uh, property income, they have never ever created in the, in the law that the income, personal income will be subject to tax. They are not doing any business. They have ownership. They own the suppose one one property to they own together, and the income is their personal income. They are not doing any business. Oh yeah. They are not doing any business. It should not be subject to tax principally. This is the income. If might be one person is owning the building or two persons owning, they are not doing any business. Yes. Hope that answers. Uh, he's asking whether leasing shall be considered as a business. Just just wanted to highlight before going back. This, uh, uh, this definition of the business is very important. If you are going into the definition of the business, they are asking any regular activity the person is doing again and again. This is business. Okay. And if I'm not doing any regular activity, if I'm, I have a building, this is in my name, I, in my wife's name, I, in my son's name, we're not doing any regular activity. We're just earning income. This is not a business. We need to go back and stick to the basic definition of business. But if we're doing the same thing again and again into the market, then it will be a business, then it will be a different treatment. Since I'm not doing any business, I'm holding one property, we are the two owners, we are getting rent. Rent is my personal income, it should not be subject to tax. Okay, that's wonderful. Hope that answers uh, uh, both the queries. And uh, there's a compliment to you uh, from uh, CMA Chandra Mauli saying that, uh, Mr. Mahar is a walking tax encyclopedia. <laughs> uh, no, 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 man. I am still learning. Very honestly, I am I am still learning. And uh, so many things to learn. So many things to learn. I really appreciate your comments. But this is still a learning phase. But actually, you are you, you have answers to every query. That's wonderful from your side. <laughs> That's a thing. Everybody is appreciating you. Uh, the way the approach to each and every queries. That's wonderful, sir. Is there any other uh, uh, queries from your side? Uh, please let me know. Uh, is there anything? Uh, shall we, uh, CMA Reji, uh, is it okay mm, uh, that yeah. we can just? Yeah, Anyhow, I think, so. I, I think, think so. we can I just think. wind up actually now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, he's saying that actually uh, Mr. Mahar is a very humble person uh, uh, thank you very much have a happy Christmas <laughs> and uh, <laughs> nice, nice meeting all of you here and uh, have a lovely time Merry Christmas yeah, to depth you. of knowledge actually to you I, I know him uh, like you know the last 8 years he is very humble and he is very knowledgeable person and uh, uh, yeah. he is very supportive uh, oh, that, that <laughs> <laughs> Take care, thank you very much thank you i've been i've been okay thank you sir thank you that's wonderful sir wonderful wonderful uh, and happy christmas I from uh, the recording. Recording. i would be really grateful for this please yeah, yeah thank you sure. from vidya thank you sure. for your informative session and uh, sadish uh, has given a happy christmas to all and to you so uh, that's wonderful thank session you sir much. thank you thank and you. it was energetic and uh, this session is very valuable to me. 
which also actually my players are anytime anytime i am in the business bin any at any time you can visit sure sir actually <laughs> i am such surprise actually you are also you have also worked with the galadari brothers i was also working with galadari brothers before i am still taking care of the galadari whole gcc vet the mazda baskin robin khalej time kumar so jcb for the all gcc countries still taking care of it okay i was working with mr chalvanya rao there actually <laughs> with whom i was working in 2007 2008 in which unit i was in the audit no no i'm asking which corporate tax office uh, i was in the corporate office corporate office a uh, corporate office okay 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 sir okay yes thank you very much i will <laughs> thank you sir thank you, thanks, thanks a lot thanks a lot and uh, it was indeed anybody uh, and again jada uh, akshan uh, sir has written thanks mahar for your informative presentation and uh, dr lakshmi has given merry christmas and happy new year to in advance to all and uh, uh, so we can just uh, wind up the session and uh, and okay jewelry is saying thank you so much for this, this wonderful session uh see me the g so so we'll just work out yeah yeah okay, just I, uh, now um thank you sir once more and Chand just me uh, lakshmi madam uh, host then she can i just, uh, and, uh, I, I just hand over to uh, lakshmi madam for uh, the word of thanks uh uh one second let me let me make her the the host let me madam you can uh, unmute and uh, say yeah are you able okay. to hear me yeah yeah sure. good yeah, evening yeah. everybody we had a wonderful session and uh, thank you mahara sir sir for you know importing uh, so much of knowledge regarding the decoding of the uae corporate tax law it was a wonderful session and the question answer session also was really extremely useful so many had doubts and some of our uh, participants had asked um, doubts which had clarified uh, which few of us had doubts also relating to this tax loss and uh, thank you for your time thank you for your efforts i thank uh, all the participants for uh, being here uh, during this uh, christmas eve apart from all their uh, schedule taking time and it was a great session thanks to the pdf committee uh, and um, headed by uh, tamil selvan sir thanks to majid seema majid riyas then uh, reji sir for all the efforts and also for the time and uh, it was a wonderful session and we will definitely be asking you more and more relating to the doubts uh, mr sir sir and uh, thanks to the zoom platform also which has enabled us to sit wherever we are and attend to all these the technology has really uh, you know is helping us wherever you all are you know it's not that uh, it has to be in person and we see that lot of participants so many had registered and it has been a very successful uh, event after the new team had taken up you know we had a organization of our uh, management committee and the new team had taken up it has been really a wonderful session thank you one and all merry christmas and an happy new year in advance to all of you thank you sorry if thank i have you. left out anybody uh, you know my apologies and uh, thanks one and all for all your efforts and uh, being here never ma'am you, you will not leave anyone actually <laughs> you from your heart you are saying so <laughs> you are you are going through everyone actually that's a wonderful wonderful word of thanks to all now actually as a token of respect laugh and for our uh, um our speaker of the day actually i just we will be providing a certificate uh that actually lakshmi ma'am can 
hand over that one from your side. No, actually, uh, it's with me. Uh, ah, yeah. I will say. Yeah, yes. Richie can hand over that one actually yes. to the speaker. So I hand over the podium to CMA Richie now. Actually, this is supposed to be handed over in person, but unfortunately, this is a virtual meeting, so I can only share it in the uh, screen. Uh, but definitely, this will be shared with the speaker. And uh, uh, once again, thanks, Mr. Maha, for uh, finding a time for us and giving us a wonderful session. Thank you so much, sir. We'll, uh, well, thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much, Rajiv. Anytime. Thank anytime. You. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is a wonderful session. Thanks to the chairman actually for sharing the certificate and that's wonderful. It's a beautiful certificate actually for you, nice. sir. It's all oh, for you. Good. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Especially for you. Sir, uh, uh, that's okay. Uh, now, uh, sir, Raji, uh, shall I, uh, shall we go for yeah. the closing session? Yeah, no? yeah, yeah. We can make it up, yeah. So thanks to uh, Mr. Mahar, uh, ourselves for that beautiful session presentation and uh, we all enjoyed rejoiced during uh, you know tomorrow is christmas so before that the padakas are there and uh, so with this presentation and uh, and we know that uh, our uh, our team our chairman the gp joes and our team uh, the uh, the uh, the the pd chairman professional development chairman uh, uh, cma tamil selvan and uh, our team, uh, Dr. Lakshmi Damanthran, and our uh, uh, mini ma'am is not here actually. And, and Surendra Surendr Naidu is here actually. CMA Surendra Naidu sir is there. And all, actually, I'll say, and also I, uh, Mr. Uh, Riaz, CMA Riaz, is one key person. Actually, uh, he's also here. So I, uh, it's it's it was a wonderful session actually. With around, I I'll see that initially it was around forty seven to fifty people joined together. So I thanks I again thank thank all those who have attended this session, and I take my time to close the session for the time being. For the now now actually it's nine night time, so we have everybody have to go for a sleep or go for a walk. And uh, those who have a gym, they will go for gym side, right? And uh, so we'll, so uh, Mahar, Mr. Mahar, you are having any, any other activities now after this? I will go and I will play cards now. This is weekend night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so everybody will have, and uh, <laughs> Sham sir and Asif sir, uh, I can see all these uh, faces now, smiling faces. Now, all people, uh, all of us, actually, Chandramali and uh, This Sati is my Ish. humble request. Uh, uh, Mr. Daji, make sure we're getting this uh, recording, please. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. This is a wonderful session, actually. We will get this on, actually, for sure, sir. Uh, so we'll close this session now. Uh, so for, for uh, today, actually, and again, we'll have a beautiful session. So till then. So I Bushanji, I, I you? hand over to CMA, uh, <laughs> the chairman. I Chandra Moli sir and uh, Radha Krishna sir. Unfortunately, there is you know limit in the Zoom that uh, everyone is not able to unmute. Yeah. So it is nice to see all of you. Few of whom already left the meeting, and few of them are still staying there. Also, like every meeting, <laughs> there is, you know, like a backbenchers, there is always a left behind people in the meeting <laughs> every day. That's wonderful, no, to see all, all faces. Bhushan sir, you have become fat now, a little bit. Or oh, your face is different now. Oh, I cannot hear you. Is it possible that it's, uh, we can unmute them? As a host, uh, as host you can uh, do it, actually. Unmute all. No, now we can unmute them. I, I think uh, now the host is Lakshmi Ma. Lakshmi Ma, please unmute all, actually. Ma no, every, she needs to make everybody host, then they need to unmute uh, themselves. Then they need to make the other person uh, host. Then it's, uh, so that's the only way, right? Mm, yeah. There's no other way, actually. I think so.
Yeah. I, I'll stop recording. I'm oh, sorry. I just. Yeah.